Every aircraft owner knows the pain of overhauling an engine. If they're smart, they've been setting aside around $8 an hour for the lifetime of their aircraft to prepare for it, since a typical engine overhaul costs upwards of $15,000. But until recently, I didn't know what the different types of overhauls were and what high school level probability is involved in keeping our engines running and us up in the air. When it's time for an engine overhaul, you have essentially three options. Buy a new one, have it overhauled, or have it rebuilt. The first one is obvious, but I think a lot of pilots assume that the latter two are interchangeable, but they're actually very different. When you have an engine overhauled, it's taken apart, some new parts are ordered, and then it's put back together. The original factory, such as Lycoming or Continental, can do this, or you can have a local shop do it. But in both cases, you're essentially getting the same engine back from the shop as you sent them. It'll have the same serial numbers and the same number of total hours. In the case of an engine rebuild or remanufacture, you're actually getting a completely different engine. And here's what blew my mind. It's not just a different engine, it's many different engines. Here's what happens. You send your engine into the factory. They immediately destroy your serial number and the logbooks. Your engine loses its identity. Then the engine is disassembled and each part inspected individually and thrown into big piles of those parts from everyone else's engines. Your new engine will be born from the mixed up ashes of possibly hundreds of other used engines in all different states of repair. Yet the factory has the nerve to call it a zero time engine? Before you panic, let's look at what's really going on here by considering everyone's engines, not just your own. Ten different engines are sent into the factory and taken apart. Some of their parts are found to be nearly perfect, while others are literally about to fail. The worst of these are thrown away, but the rest are tossed into the pile. Sure, some of these parts would have run for another 2,000 hours before catastrophic failure, but others might have failed within the next hundred. By combining all of the good parts into new engines, the factory effectively averages the possibility of any one engine failing before its next overhaul is due. This is quite literally high school probability, yet I've never heard anyone else put it this way. The statistics actually get better and better every engine generation as the manufacturing defects are removed from circulation and only the best parts are left. Fun fact, this is also the way that junk bonds on the stock market produce higher yields than the market average. Buy stock in any one company and you play a dangerous game, but buy hundreds and only the ones that stay in business continue to earn you money. Next time you hear that an engine's TBO is a suggestion and not an FAA requirement, I want you to remember that it's actually an ingenious scheme set up by engine manufacturers to ensure your continued business in return for steadily increasing engine safety for everyone, just not necessarily your specific engine. I hope this may have shed some light on the elusive engine overhaul process. That's all for today, folks. We'll catch you next time on the Friendly Skies Channel.